Uh, alright, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Uh, selamat pagi, selamat salam sejahtera. So today we are going to um, have uh, hopefully uh, an interesting uh, session where we explore ChatGPT for use uh, in our uh, our academic work. Okay, so the the, the title of the, the the talk or the the webinar today is uh how to supercharge your classroom uh, with chat gpt okay so and the way that i'm going to conduct this session is i'm going to use uh, chat gpt uh, as much as possible so uh, so first let me share my screen and uh start the chat gpt uh, so let me So can you see my screen? Hopefully you can. Yes, we can see. Okay. So um, from our participants that we have uh, today so far in in the session, uh, can I see a um, uh, raise of hand? How many uh, have used uh, Chat GPT? So just uh, click on raise your hand. I just wanted to. Uh, see how many out of the 72 so far. So I would say around 30 percent, 30, 30 plus percent of use uh, chat GPT. Uh, that's great. Thank you very much for uh, the answer. So you, you may uh, lower your hand now. Okay. Um, uh, it's I think it is good that uh, I can see that quite a number of people have already started uh, using uh, chat GPT for your work. And now what we, I, what we are going to do is I'm going to uh, show you uh, the way that we can utilize uh, chat GPT so that um, we make our life as an academic, uh, especially in, in teaching and learning, uh, uh, easier. So the idea is we use chat GPT as our assistant. Okay, uh, Normally, we, we work uh, quite independently isn't it, as, as educators. But uh, the, the use of chat GPT will actually allow us to have um, an assistant that can help us uh, do certain things that we need to do uh, every day anyway okay and, and it will not take away the uh, how, how do i say this? the the intellectual thinking that we need to do in order for the class or the, the teaching uh, uh, to run uh, as how we intended. Okay, uh, it does not take away our expertise. It does not take away our knowledge. I even uh, have sessions with my students when I did my 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 class where we actually uncover how bad it is. Uh, especially uh, when you try to use Chat GPT to look up. Uh, specific knowledge okay so so uh, we will explore that okay uh, so i'm going to use uh, chat gpt to uh, for the for the webinar today so it, i think it is quite un unconventional a lot of uh, other chat gpt webinars that i've uh, uh, gone through uses powerpoint in their, uh, for their uh, for their uh, for the presentation okay uh, so i'm going to use uh, so in this session, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a series of prompts to show to you how we can use uh, ChatGPT to uh, uh, to supercharge our class. Okay, so uh, first things plus, um, I use uh, ChatGPT uh, the the paid version, so it, I think it's um, uh, two hundred ringgit uh, uh, per per month uh, 80 80 80 dollars 
Okay, uh, but I think it's 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 worth it because um, I get um, quite a number of things done uh, really really uh, quickly and efficient. Okay, so I have uh, so since I I'm using the 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 the, the plus version, I can choose between um, uh, the the old version GPT three point five or or the GPT four, which is the uh, the one that I'm going to use. Okay, uh, and the the difference between uh, GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 is actually GPT-4 has a cap of 25 uh, messages every three hours so you are limited in that way but it allows for uh, a quick reply and uh, in the event of uh, a lot of traffic inside chat GPT you're not really affected by that so so that's the the, the plus point of of having uh, the, the paid version of chat GPT okay so the series of prompts. So the first one, I'm going to prompt ChatGPT to design this session for us. Okay. So uh, in my my role as uh, the uh, training, you know, so uh, e-learning before, I uh, I need to come up with training programs for for you guys, you know, basically. So uh, and before this, I have to actually uh, write everything myself. Uh, to uh, to create the, the text and everything myself. But with ChatGPT, what I can do is I just write a series of prompts to ask it to help me design things. Okay, so so I've, I've already created uh, those prompts. I'll just copy and paste them because I think it will be it will take too long for us to for me to uh, type it in front of you. And okay, so so this is uh, my uh, first prompt to ChatGPT. Hopefully you can see the, the screen. Uh, can you confirm that you see the screen? You saw the screen? Yes, Dr. Okay. okay, okay, all right. Thank you very much. So, so what I ask it uh, to do is uh, I want it to act as a teaching learning expert in higher education. So basically, uh, you you want it to act as, as I am, um, uh, okay? Uh, and I'm trying to uh, planning to conduct this training session. Um, so um, and I prompt it so that um, uh, the chat GPT will create a program that it will assist you as lecturers to conduct your day to day work, especially on teaching and learning uh, curriculum design and solution And uh, I want it to be designed for a two hour session. OK, and the context is uh, the, to 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 be delivered as a webinar amongst um, my my colleagues, uh, my fellow academics. So uh, with that uh, prompt, so let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. Okay, so this is uh, the prompt that um, I gave, and this is the the the, the generate generated design for the the session. Okay, so. Automatically, it starts to produce and generate this program. Okay, interesting, including breaks, 30 minutes, uh, sorry, 10 minutes. And it also comes up with what materials and resources that I do I need. Remember, it reads the context of having this as a webinar, and it uh, rightly suggests that uh, so you need to have an interactive online platform for the webinar. It's Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Google Meet. So it's actually um, comes up with uh, quite a, a useful information to for me to start off uh, the design of the training program. So, uh, so let's see uh, what it, uh, it is suggesting here. So, first one, uh, they, they already gave uh, a title. So, Leveraging AI in Academia, Enhancing Teaching, Learning Research uh, with ChatGPT. So, it gives it gives an overview of, of the session. Okay, uh, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, day-to-day work. And then, it comes up with the training session. So, Automatically, ten minutes. So, welcome and brief of participant introduction. This is what I'm 
I'm giving you just now, uh, the session objective and also the expected outcome. So the so this is something that I have not uh, sort of uh, designed uh, just now. Uh, so I'm going to ask uh, Jet GPT to explain more on this one session objective and uh, expected outcome. So what I'm going to prompt it. So this is this is something that I'm going to type. Um, So I'm trying, uh, so I'm, I'm going to say suggest three outcomes from the where Bina share with them. Okay, so and then we can see, so this is uh, the uh, expected outcomes. So and let's say for example, I think the the outcomes are too too long for uh, the two hour session, and uh, I'm going to say to the to chat GPT is that is that um, two thirds of the participants uh, are very new to chat GPT. Okay, so. Uh, in very suggest in blood. Comes that participants can use right away. Okay, so now it suggests uh, a much simpler outcomes that uh, we hope you can sort of start doing it and bring it home. Okay, so that's, uh, that's how uh, it helps us to uh, create uh, this uh, session so that then we can then go through the, the session. Oh, of course, I'm, I'm, I have a different idea for uh, the session, uh, but uh, I can I can even like put in uh, what I exact want exactly with uh, with the session, but I'm going to uh, just uh, let it slide uh, for now. So, so that is how uh, the the design for that uh, training I can actually create with uh, using ChatGPT. And uh, what I normally do is I'm going to go through the uh, suggestions uh, and uh, write my own uh, training that, in my view, will actually meet the expectation meet the needs of uh academics in the con in our context because our context is uh i would say uh, more specific and then something that chat gpt will be able to uh able to provide uh so chat gpt is a conversational tool so that means uh, you have a conversation with chat gpt i know there are uh, a few discussions uh, uh especially on uh on plagiarism that's one thing but the social aspect is something that we need to also look at uh ethical awareness uh, uh, the social aspect of um, students and lecturers using chat gpt i think especially for the introverts uh, the extroverts they they thrive on like meeting people and, and talking to people but, but in the introverts i think there is 
uh, a degree of risk that we need to be aware of when uh, chat GPT uh, replace uh, social interactions, isn't it? And, and some, that is something that uh, we need to uh, be uh, careful especially when uh, we are dealing with our students uh, and we ask students to use Ch chat gpt when when they do their uh, coursework okay so that's uh, uh, the first thing that we can use the chat gpt for so uh, in in my role uh, as uh, training uh, in, in edX, i can do this but uh, Certainly, in your role, when you are dealing with um, the external uh, people, uh, you are proposing a training program with uh, outside uh, parties, then you can actually start using this uh, chat GPT to help you create and design an outline of uh, a training or a session uh, or a talk so that then uh, you'll be able to uh, fine tune it uh, according to the needs of your uh, audience. You can actually go through the, the process of uh, giving context uh, to chat GPT so that then it refines it through and uh, according to uh, your needs. Okay, so, so that's number one use that we can use for chat GPT. Okay, uh, before we move on to uh, using chat GPT for class, any, uh, I would invite anyone to give uh, feedback or uh, you want to say anything, uh, comment or ask questions. Yeah, that, yeah, that is right. We don't hear. Yeah. I agree with you because um, recently doing the having to come up with an abstract for the Satu Research Grant. Mm. I actually use ChatGPT to to start the ball rolling for me. Of course, it's just suggestion from ChatGPT, okay. but it's a very good way of uh, how to say um, brainstorming when you need quick brainstorming. And I think this is a this is a very good, very useful. All right, thank you. Uh, so I I've seen uh, there's a there's a few uh, comments from in the chat. Um, so, uh, Dr. Farid, I think, uh, so can you start from scratch uh, for people who never use ChatGPT? So, uh, ChatGPT, uh, what you do, uh, so you can actually Google how to uh, go on to ChatGPT. It's, 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 it's quite simple. It's very straightforward. Um, the way that you go into ChatGPT, just uh, try uh, logging in into or Google ChatGPT and it will bring you to a, a landing page that asks you to uh, uh, register and, and log in. So you can you can register, uh, you can use the free version. So the free version uh, is equally, I would say, powerful. Uh, so that then you can start using and start asking questions. So ChatGPT is based on the large language model. So that means uh, you use it as how you would check with the chatbot. So hopefully that uh, helps uh, and also answers the question from uh, Dr. Farid. Okay, so uh, Helen, the, uh, the comment is, since the title is about supercharging, um, it would have been better for people to already learn the stuff how to, uh, to. Yes, I mean, um, uh, uh, we have a, a mixture of participants here. Uh, the ones who have used chat GPT before, the ones who have not tried it before, the ones who are, who are agitant, to use, uh, yeah, we welcome uh, everyone uh, from different levels. But uh, yes, we will have to have a short intro for the the very very newcomers. But then uh, we are going to move on to the to the more advanced stuff uh, a little bit later. Okay, so I have a raise of hand from uh, No Aniza. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, doctor. So uh, I have one small question, lah, doctor. Maybe due to my limited knowledge in chat GPT, kan, doctor. Mm -hmm. Just wonder, can chat GPT helping me with um, diagram or equations, like proposing that? Uh, is that possible, doctor? Uh, personally, ha I have not tried it with uh, diagrams yet. Uh, mm -hmm. So there is a different AI tool for creating diagrams. But I know for a fact that ChatGPT can come up with uh, tables, anything with text with tables, uh, it can do that. Uh, I would 
I'm going to uh, suggest or show uh, a little bit later how do we design uh, rubrics <laughs> for assessment that will actually uh, produce a, a table uh, that uh, already uh, that you can actually uh, use right away. Okay, so not yet like I solving have, the equations, not yet. I have yet. not tested it. Okay. okay. Uh, I have not tested it. Um, uh, maybe uh, later when uh, I have time, I'll uh, be able to test uh, everything. But um, you, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and I think you are free to try and use uh, or ask ChatGPT. So, uh, have you uh, used ChatGPT before? Uh, myself, doctor. Yeah, I've tried. But, okay, so but have, I, have you tried yeah. putting uh, an equation? Ask it to answer you. Yeah. I've tried, but I'm I'm very novice uh, user, lah, doctor. Okay. I, yeah. I, I don't know much about the the program, so I think due to my limited knowledge, I try equations. I I try asking about the diagram, but it seems that uh, they couldn't uh, they couldn't provide that for me. Oh, okay, yeah. So, uh, I think everybody is in, in the same page uh, as as well. Uh, so, if uh, it doesn't work for you, probably it will not work for me as well. Okay, okay. So let's let's continue. So, um, thank you very much for the the questions and uh, the engagement. Okay, so. What I would like uh, us to be able to use uh, ChatGPT for is actually to use it as uh, a class design. So normally we we have the fourteen weeks uh, these uh, classes in it that already been sort of uh, programmed in our uh, form six or form uh, yeah form six or oh, oh, sorry form form seven uh, that. Tells you okay. Uh, this week, what what will happen? What are the topics that we learn for uh, uh, a single week? Yes. So you can actually create the uh, the session using that. Okay. So uh, the 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 prompt to use for that is actually uh, something that's quite simple. Okay, sorry, uh, that's not the the right one. Okay, so let me copy this one. Okay, so it's as simple as as a lecture of what uh, name subject, design a class session to teach uh, what topic. Okay, so, so I'm going to put in the subject that I am teaching. So, uh, Option. So I'm going to the topic um, Act five one four. So as simple as that, uh, it will give you something that's uh, quite um, quite simple. So because you did not give uh, enough context, then uh, it will try to fill that information in uh, for yourself. Okay. So uh, so it's it is rightly suggesting that it's. The right act. So so far, that's that's fine. Um, OSHA Act is actually Occupational Safety, uh, Occupational Safety and Health Act, nineteen ninety four. The uh, ChatGPT got this correct. Okay, uh, and it gives the objectives uh, for one hour and uh, thirty minutes um, and overview, uh, deep dive, key key provisions, and and then uh, employer and employer employee is. Uh, responsibilities so and it also designed and also suggested group activities so uh, provide each group with a scenario and then identify how OSHA is applied in that, that scenario okay so it gives you a very general idea because you did not give uh, it a very specific topic or very specific learning outcome that you want to to achieve. Okay, so 
here it gives you uh, four learning outcomes, which for a uh, one hour, three minutes, 30 minutes class, I think it will be uh, too much, isn't it? So, so then it it's time for you to start to uh, pick away on uh, what you really want to do with the students. So I would ask ChatGPT uh, the uh, objective, the question is too much. Okay. I want to focus only on uh, Okay. So when I when I use that prompt. So now chat GPT is thinking. <laughs> okay, so now it comes up with a new outcome and a new outline for the uh, class to focus on that uh, outcome okay so so it says uh, so there's an introduction and that's the overview Deep dive and real world application. Okay. But when I look, uh, look at it, I'm, I'm not really happy. Okay. So I, I would ask it to stop generating. I'm going to edit this to uh, give it more context. Okay. So, so I'm going to say that, um, okay, the session needs to be highly engaging. So I've already created this, this prompt before. The session needs to be highly engaging, involving a lot of collaborative learning activity done by the students. Um, I don't want to talk a lot. Okay. So, Now it's, it's suggesting something else, okay? And it follows the context of what we wanted, making sure that the class is engaging and collaborative. So now you can see that it starts to uh, give you uh, a context which uh, follows closely of uh, what you uh, wanted to do. Okay, so it suggested uh, collaborative learning activity done uh, by students, and that's a lot of it, uh, starting from uh, the beginning. So if you compare this um, this new class session. A plan. Uh, you you compare it with uh, this one. You can see that there is a difference, isn't it? So uh, this one looks uh, very uh, lecture based. So that means uh, introduction, overview. So it's the the bulk of the work is done on this. But uh, for wait, there is a difference. So you on, only introduce the topic. Just uh, five minutes, 
and then it starts with the uh, activity uh, by the students presentation uh, discussion so so it becomes something that's more uh, engaging uh, for the students so to design class um, i would suggest if especially for those who are really really used to giving lectures isn't it um, and i would actually uh, challenge uh, you to ask yourself this important question i have taught them using lectures so how do i know that they have learned within the two hour period okay and i ask quite a number of uh, educators expect, uh, in, even in, even in um this question and uh, the answer uh, might actually surprise you uh, a lot of people never talked about uh, uh, ask this question to themselves so the question again i have thought but have they learned okay and time to me i think it's important for us to realize that uh, the students are there not to watch us work when we are giving talks we are giving a lecture for two hours uh, the students are watching us working and the amount of learning that they have from that is very questionable and this is not something just uh, that i say by myself uh, a lot of literature also uh, discuss about this and you will find that classrooms need to be uh, very engaging with the students and we need to be able to tease out students opinion uh, students uh, feedback from whatever that we are trying to uh, we are trying to explore with them okay so if you are not used to having a collaborative classroom a, a noisy classroom chat gpt i think would help you start to find ideas on how you can actually a design a session or create the learning is done by uh, and this is something that uh, we uh, can explore uh, together okay so so class design so that's um, uh, quite i think it's, it's quite uh, uh, straightforward isn't it uh, the only thing that you need to know is what to ask and what context do you give uh, chat gpt so that then uh, it could help you to create uh, a session okay um so let's open up the uh, chat okay. uh there are a, a few who can't see uh, the screen um so hopefully uh zari datul dr zari datul you are, you are okay Okay, um, so before we move on to assessment and anyone wants to uh, raise anything or ask anything? Okay, no? All right, so let's uh, move on. So hopefully you've already got that, that, that idea. Uh, where you use uh, chat gpt for a class design so so we've done the uh, the class so uh, uh, we've already created the uh, the class we have created the uh, the chat gpt the chat gpt uh, prompt for that so let's ask uh, for ideas on different engaging work that the students can do in the classroom okay so what we can do is adjust uh, five active learning activities okay so to give us to give us uh, options so just now uh, it only gives us uh, activity number one which is uh, break student into different groups number two prepare presentation uh activity number three case study analysis okay so five additional active learning activities that the students do, do. 
achieve the learning outcome. Okay. So now we are asking it to provide us more for, with more ideas of what to do. Okay, so these are the, the ideas that start coming up. First one, OSHA quiz, quiz bowl. That's interesting. I've never think of it that way before. Role play, creation of safety posters. So I've done that quite a lot. Uh, debate, I've done that uh, as well. Uh, peer teaching. Okay, so that's interesting. So peer teaching. Uh, ask students to prepare mini lessons on different parts of OSHA 94 at relevant construction. They will teach their topics. Okay, so it's some some sort of a uh, peer teaching. So, yeah, so, so that is how uh, we use uh, ChatGPT to start to get ideas for uh, classes uh, and class sessions, isn't it? Uh, and you can ask uh, a lot more. You want to um, make actually ask that uh, uh, chat good thing about chat gpt is actually it keeps and saves all this that you can actually go back to uh, in uh, in the uh, later future in, in in the future so um, you can uh, get uh, so these are the, the things that i have asked chat gpt since I, i started to use it in january so i started using it in january so I asked uh, quite a number of like um, different things. Um, you can actually use ChatGPT in in Malay, um, uh, but I think uh, ChatGPT um, uh, in uh, in Malay, uh, it's not really in Malay language. So it's actually a mixture of Mal uh, Malaysian and Indonesian language. So uh, to ask ChatGPT something in 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 Malay language, you need to you you need to be very specific with the context you need to say malaysian uh, malay language so you ask that uh, to answer you in malaysian malay uh, hopefully that will give you something that's uh, uh, close to our our language because um, when you look at so this is uh, the answer from chat so there are a, a con quite a number of words that is and not really something that we are used to, isn't it? Accurate. So who who said that uh, in, uh, in Malaysia? Okay, manjat. So this is something that's um, uh, not really something that we uh, normally say in, in Malaysia. So I, I, from this, my suspicion is it's a mixture of uh, Malay and uh, Indonesian. Okay, so, and it, so the, the, the thing is, it, it saves all this, um, uh, chat that you have uh, with them so that then you can actually go back to, the, to it and then um, uh, revisit it. You can even uh, try to ask it to regenerate um, the response so that then you, you get something else. So, so when you ask chat GPT to regenerate response, what, uh, what we can do is you just click on this regenerate response. Okay, so notice that it shows you this two out of two here. Okay, uh, and I will tell you how you, you can actually jump uh, from uh, one uh, generated answer to another. Okay, So now it's suggesting a different activity. It's, it's suggesting a jigsaw activity. So jigsaw is something that uh, I, I use in my classroom, classroom a lot, uh, where you get students to uh, go through uh, the, the, the content or, and then pre prepare a presentation and then uh, to uh, to share it with uh, their 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 peers as uh, an expert in, in that's the so activity. Okay, so when you ask uh, ChatGPT to regenerate respond, so one thing you will see is this uh, two out of two. You can actually copy and paste this uh, somewhere. You can go back. Uh, you can. Um, you will be prompted with a question. So, was this response worse or be better or worse? So, you can uh, either answer it or just keep the comparison. So, if you 
would you like to um, uh, answer? So what it does is actually this trains ChatGPT. You are helping chat, uh, to train ChatGPT uh, by answering this, uh, uh, this this survey. So uh, I would say same. Okay. So this is uh, actually a machine learning that uh, rule that they, they have. Okay. You can even go back to the first one by you can see. So this is the first one. Uh, different than what we have. Uh, some of some of it is different than that we had uh, just now. You can even ask it to regenerate it again. So it will give you the third one. So and that can continue on and on and on. But at, to a certain extent, it will start showing you similar things. Okay. So now uh, still have the, this uh, this role play thing uh, going on. Debate still the same. Okay, um, so I'm, I'm looking at the chat while it's generating the, the content. So uh, there are questions about the integration and integrate differentiation chat, BG, chat GPT can solve integration. Okay, that, that's nice. Um, okay, visual diagram. So visual diagram now can be uh, done using uh, another software called Meet Journey. So Meet Journey works in, um, oh, I forgot the, the name of that, um, Discord, yeah. So Meet Journey works in Discord. So uh, you need to have a Discord uh, account to do that. So uh, if you have teenage kids, you would probably have a uh, Discord um, somewhere in your in your house, uh, either in, in your, your kids. Uh, uh, kids uh, laptops or your kids phone and you can actually try that um, uh, mid journey okay uh, so mid journey is is um, is a program a, 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 a prompt based image generator so what so you ask it to come up with a, a, an image that you wanted to see so that means so you say so i want to uh, so uh, create um so create a picture of um, uh, ocean uh, view with a uh, farm of our most blah, blah, um, uh, fishermen uh, with their fishing nets uh, and uh, there is um, in the background birds flying. So, so you type all those prompts and Mid Journey will create a, a, a four, four different to reflect okay and from that you can actually choose one and then ask it to refine uh, the the uh, the picture that uh, it generated so it, it's interesting i i have not sort of uh, allocated time for uh, trying out uh, mid journey uh, in uh, in this session um, i have not actively used uh, mid journey before but i tried it uh, using my kids uh, computer because uh, his his computer uh, uh, uses he uses Discord to to di to discuss uh, or to to chat with uh, his friend. So uh, yeah yeah. So Mid Journey is nothing, uh, and it will be a uh, interesting exploration uh, using that. Um, okay, and so let's uh, move on to yeah. So so this is how uh, this. Uh, Activities that we ideas that we can our uh, use of ChatGPT. Okay, so that is for uh, class design and, and uh, uh, learning activities that uh, we can do with students. Okay, so next we are going to explore assessment. Okay, so as assessment you need to remember that when we when we do assessment, it needs to be uh, also quite specific. You need to have 
uh, an an LO or uh, several LOs that the chat GPT need to uh, match or uh, achieve. Okay, so an example of that would be something uh, like this. Let me copy and paste that prompt. Okay, so this is, a, this is something that I've already uh, created before. So generate five continuous assessment ideas that will successfully measure the following learning outcomes. Uh, each assessment is worth um, 50 or 100 marks for the course. Okay, so and this is for a different uh, course already. Okay, well, so let me uh, give it that context. Second, yeah. Uh, okay, so context is very important. So now it comes up with ideas for continuous assessment so uh, the first one uh, building the analysis report okay so and it gives it also gives what are the uh, the synopsis of the assessment work so student will provide a description of uh, image blah blah blah, blah. Uh, identify cause grading will be accurate based on the uh, diagnosis okay defect analysis uh, role play uh, case study variation I would suggest these are actually something that we normally would do anyway, isn't it? So, uh, so practical building inspection. So what I normally do with my students is actually the practical building inspection part. Okay, so it's nothing out of the uh, ordinary. So I want to get ChatGPT to suggest something that's out of or, out of the ordinary. Uh, so I would say this is uh, so these are two common there's something so let's say what let's see what it will come up with. Well, there's a spelling mistake there. So now he's scratching his head. Okay. So well, well that, well that's happening. That's um cool. Uh yeah, hey, Prof Victor, how are you? For chat GPT or use the free one. I would suggest um, if you can live with the limitations of the free one, just use the free one. It doesn't really uh, change or limit you in um, uh, very much. Okay. Uh, if you are in a, always in a hurry and you want uh, uh, chat GPT to be able to <laughs> come up with uh, because sometimes when, when you use the free version, if the answer is going to be long, uh, ChatGPT will not be able to finish the answer. So, so that is something that I sometimes uh, struggle with, uh, with uh, the, the free version of ChatGPT. So that's why one of the reasons why I opt to pay for uh, uh, the one that, that uh, I'm using right now. But at the same time, you are free to opt in and out anytime. So. Uh, Say for in, in a month or during something uh, that is happening that you need to use it a lot. So just pay for it. So it's just 200 ringgit per, uh, per month. So you just use that, uh, pay for the 200 ringgit per month, uh, do anything that you need to do with it. And then just uh, stop the subscription and then use the free ones for the normal day-to-day -day, uh, work uh, of uh, that you have. 
Okay, so so I think uh, there are a number of ways that we can sort of uh, leverage the use uh, the use of this to use it efficiently and also to use it economically. Uh, okay, for for our academic use. Okay, so let's see how uh, Chat GPT is responding to my uh, prompt of saying that this is so uh, common. Okay, so detective story dynasties project. Okay, so students write it over evidence. Okay, this is it is quite it's quite interesting. Okay. Um, okay, it's similar to the practical body inspection, but gives a, a, a different twist to it. Okay. Interactive defect analysis game. Okay. Ah, yeah, that's it. Uh, I, I I actually even tried this once uh, a few years back. To, to design uh, a, a defect game. Digital portfolio, okay, very good. Augmented reality, so if the technology is there, okay, if technology permits, okay. Building doctor cl clinic uh, role play. Yeah, I mean, uh, so those are, I would say, validly something that's uh, out of the box. Uh, and then, so these are uh, the assessment for that. Okay, so, so we've come up with the assessment. So one more to create the. I remember just now uh, there is a question about the um, the rubrics, isn't it? Um, uh, so uh, yeah. Um, oh, sorry. The the question is um, uh, from uh, Doctor. Uh, no, Aniza, talking, uh, asking about uh, diagrams. Okay, uh, I can, uh, I can certainly say that we can use it for uh, rubrics. With uh, it will come up with a table for us. Okay, so let's take the the last one um, as the uh, the assignment that we want to choose and we want to get the rubrics from uh, ChatGPT. Okay, so create a rubric. So um, I'm going to be quite specific with this so that then uh, you know how uh, to use it for the okay. assessment. Okay. So uh, the Bridge B prepare table format with minimum two columns. Column okay. uh, is the criteria. Then column E, the achievement level. Okay, in different okay. So let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. Okay, so this is a table, isn't it? Created by uh, ChatGPT.
Based on identification, cost analysis, effect prediction. Okay, I'm not entirely happy with the uh, table that it created because uh, it shows that uh, the, the, the high achievement, medium achievement and low achievement is in a single column, in a single box. So uh, we can um, refine our our uh, prompt to uh, get the different achievement level to be separated. Okay. So I will just add. Okay. Columns. Okay. Uh, let's. Uh, better prompt to refine. Okay. Let's see how ChatGPT respond to this. It actually comes up with a five level achievement. Okay, so so it's it's much better, isn't it? And you, you can use this as a starting point for you to customize the column or the the, the achievement level and even the, the criteria to match what you really wanted to do with, with the student. So uh the way that we use chat GPT is actually we use it as for uh, our ideas so that then we can elaborate and we can expand it into something that uh, will be uh, useful within our context. Because remember, ChatGPT does not have the knowledge and also the context, the, the specific context that we have, even though we try to prompt it with uh, some sort of uh, context giving for uh, what we are trying to do. Okay, so, so that's how you can start building on from what we uh, have created to something that you show to the student. So you you share with some, you share something with the student which, which is might be I would say seventy to eighty percent similar with uh, what you get from the chat GPT. Okay, so that's um, assessment. Um, and and also learning outcome okay so uh, let's pause and let's take on uh, some more question so after uh, pro victor Farid, so dr Farid, so basically the key is given right prompts yes um, that's correct so basically with chat gpt the thing is you need to be able to come up with the right prompt, okay? And another thing about giving right prompts is you need to have knowledge to do that. So unless you know what you want, you know what you, what the knowledge, the background knowledge is, it will not be able to give you the, the right answers or the answers that you want. So you need to know the end okay so so uh, i i remember uh, having this uh, read this uh, book by stephen Covey. so one of the uh, the the key uh, the key uh, principles that you have and you need to have is actually begin with the end in mind okay so 
begin with the end in mind also means you have the background knowledge and you know what really is it, is it that you wanted to, to get at the end. So without that, uh, ask the right question. And that is something that our students are struggling with. Okay, I have um, I have uh, an assignment, uh, a coursework that I give uh, to my students. So I let, I will just share uh, that, that assignment with you. Yeah, let me uh, let me try and open my spectrum. So I'm teaching a couple of courses this semester. I wonder you uh, whether you are watching my uh, where, where you can see my spectrum. Can you see my spectrum? Yes. Are you able to see my? So this is the uh, class that I'm teaching. Okay, construction law and okay so this is um what i asked them to do so i i used an in um so uh, so this is something that uh, you need to uh also uh, good information for you turn in now have the ability to check and detect uh ai generated text from um chat gpt or any other um like ai AI uh, platforms. Okay, so I asked them to uh, do this work. So for them to uh, write a legal research pertaining to uh, several scenarios, so that I gave them two scenarios. This is in individual work. Okay, so look at um, uh, instruction number two. So I say uh, conduct research, legal research of uh, on the relevant uh, legal issues. You may check, use Chat GPT. Uh, as your starting point. Okay, so remember these are actually building surveying course uh, students. They have no idea what legal research is. Okay, and then um, instruction number five. So write a response. With, so so this is the the instruction number five. Uh, write a response between seven hundred words for the work. But then at the end, add an additional section titled "How I use ChatGPT." For this work and describe how ChatGPT is used to complete assignment. So, uh, we have we have so uh, a bit of background. We have already explored the use of ChatGPT in our classroom, especially when uh, when doing uh, construction law. You refer a lot to uh, previous cases, past cases, and and sometimes those cases are cases from uh, the nineteen eighties in 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 the UK. Okay, and what we found out. Uh, you during our class session uh, when we tried to use chat GPT for for this kind of uh, of work is that it will when asked by different students with almost similar prompts it will give you different answers so the same case was uh, so the same case uh, entered by the students so one student got uh, a different case got um, different problems. The other students got different problems just from the uh, same case. Even when the students put in the title uh, of the case correctly with the correct year uh, that the case happened, it gives uh, different answers uh, to the point that um, they no longer want to actually use um, chat GPT to ask for uh, to to try to. Uh, it's useless. It, it will always uh, students start to sort of um, need to do their own fact check. So they they second guess guess themselves when they uh, come up with uh, when they ask uh, student uh, chat GPT for answers. Okay, but uh, and we have uh, a discussion last week uh, about this because uh, they are uh, they are supposed to uh, uh, submit this. Um, um, uh, at the end of this month, okay. So we had the discussion last week, and and they were complaining to me. Uh, we can't get the answer in ChatGPT, and we don't want to use it. It's it's, it's useless. So, but uh, then uh, we have this conversation where I asked them, uh, "Do you know what legal research is? How how do we, how do you find a legal research format?" 
Okay. And those are the things that you can ask, actually ask ChatGPT. Uh, the, the general questions, it will be able to help you. Of course, you will, be, you will need to uh, do the research yourself. You need to um, uh, look at the applicable laws, make sure the, 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 the acts, um, the, the clauses are the correct clauses because sometimes, uh, so this is another interesting thing, when you ask specific, specific clause, uh, clauses in, in law, it will not be able to give you the, the right answer. It will give just go uh, all the different directions. Okay, so uh, they know that ChatGPT is, isn't real, real, but what I want to to use ChatGPT to get the questions, but use ChatGPT to get the ideas of how you can start doing the work. Okay, so so that is something that uh, we had a discussion, and uh, they they finally understood what I mean by uh, using uh, AI for for their work, and and this actually translate way beyond when they uh, just asked when when they are studying. Uh, two years, three years down the line, ChatGPT is going to be everywhere, isn't it? But who are who are the ones going to benefit from it it is those who knows how to use it correctly and even now uh, we can see that there are new careers uh, being created out of uh, interactions with ai okay and one of it uh, does not uh, does not compels you to have uh, IT uh, does not compare to be an IT graduate. You don't need to know programming to do it, which is a chat GPT prompt engineer. Okay? So a chat GPT prompt engineer or AI prompt engineer are uh, those people who knows how to write uh, or how to ask the right questions so that then you get the right answers. Okay, so that's very interesting. So uh, we lose jobs, but at the same time, new jobs come in uh, to make full use of the AI revolution that we have right now. So it's something that is uh, really interesting. Okay, so yeah, so I mean, that is something that we need to explore and we need to give the, the, the students a feel of how is it that they need to be able to be able to successfully use AI to make sure that they can work efficiently, they can work in de independently and be able to leverage on the technology for their future. Okay, so uh, any any comments, Any anybody wants to ask any question, uh, so just open up your mic. Um, any concerns that you have? Anyone? Okay, so if, if there's no uh, question, so let's move on to uh, our uh, session again or webinar again. So, so now we've uh, created the, so we, uh, we start the, the lesson plan, okay. Then the, uh, the, the assessment, okay. And then we've already uh, sort of created the assessment uh, together with the rubrics for the assessment. So remember, when, when you create rubrics, please make sure that you give the rubrics to uh, students so that then uh, they know what to target. Okay. Uh, sometimes students <laughs> complain to me, uh, uh, we don't know what, uh, what you really, really want from this. So giving rubrics to students uh, and telling them, okay, so I want you to target uh, the highest mark. Okay, so that is uh, that is the per that is the reason why I give rubrics to you. It's not for you to look after you have submitted the the work. It's make sure that it's to make sure that you have all the criteria pinned down in your work. So that's how rubrics is used. And uh, sometimes uh, it's surprising that students don't have any idea. Uh, how to use the rubric 
it's something that you need to have a discussion. So we've uh, created the rubrics, uh, we've created the assessment. So now so let's look at how else can we further use ChatGPT to make our work uh, more efficient and um, and generate better ideas. Okay, and I'm going to suggest that we can use this for our exam questions. Okay, so this is something that we do every semester. We need to create new exam questions. We need to create uh, uh, better exam questions, and we need to create uh, a different exam question than what we uh, normally use because we don't want to recycle that exam question every every year, isn't it? Um, so what we can use as prompt uh, for the uh, chat GPT is we we can use it to analyze exam questions and come up with a different uh, question. Okay, so so I've already created the, the prompt for that. So this is something that um, I'm so, so this is something that I've uh, already prepared for. So, so this is for a different course. Okay. Let me paste this. Uh, so now I'm going to ask it to so text as the exam for the course. Um, Everything health and safety mm -hmm. construction. Okay. Okay. So, so the prompt is analyze this past year question and create four new questions that is similar in style but with different content to assess the learning outcome. So you need to state uh, the learning outcome for this. So let me uh, find what are the learning outcome for it. So this is, uh, this, oh, I'm not putting. So let me just uh, just write something. Um, okay. uh, Okay. Okay. And then, so these are the questions. So number one. Okay. Number two. Three. So I want to get four new questions. Okay, it should be similar style, but different content. Okay, so we ask this to Chat GPT. So it's interesting where it does not just come up with the question. But it also ask the uh, uh, it also tells you how the question should be answered and what are the the, the gist of the question. Okay, so. So out of the three questions discussed relationship is, uh, between importance, uh, improvement health safety with increased priority, uh, product reputation, uh, recruitment, and explain position of personal uh, PPE in risk control hierarchy, elaborate four meanings of best, best practicable as mentioned. So uh, what are the, the, the new questions that they uh, that 
chat GPT suggested. So number one, discuss potential impact uh, on reducing product delay and uh, cost in the construction industry. So then we need to start thinking, is it something that we have discussed with the students before in the classroom? Isn't it? So we cannot just take whatever chat GPT suggests to us and put it in our our draft exam question for, for vetting uh, with our colleagues, isn't it? We need to be then have a look at those questions and be able to satisfy ourselves that so this is something that we have covered in uh, the class, isn't it? So discuss potential impact, uh, explain role of reg uh, regular safety training. So is, is it something that we have discussed in uh, the, the classroom? Is it something that the students learn? Is it, is it part of the learning outcome that we uh, ask them to uh, achieve okay so and again so you you start to question uh, yourself not 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 in chat not in chat GPT, but so you need to have that critical thinking inside you your head to make sure that the question is suitable for what you wanted to ask does it follow closely with uh, the learning outcomes that you had in mind okay or if you think that it's not suitable or if you want it to come up with more questions then you just click on generate response so so now we have the second version of uh, the questions Okay, so again, when you ask more, uh, when you ask to the chat GPT to regenerate the response, it will ask you this uh, survey question. Whereas this response better or worse? Uh, is it the same or is it worse or is it better? So uh, I just want to just uh, pay for this and just say it's worse. Okay, so, so let's go back to the first one. God, I, so I probably like this one better because it uh, tells you uh, what are the, the the reason behind the question. There are prompts, isn't it? Okay, so so that is number one that we can do with uh, exam questions. So number two, what we can do is actually we can use the chat GPT to come up with answers of uh, questions. So we, you might have ideas for questions, but you were intrigued to see how would uh, chat gpt answer those, those questions because then you'll be able to uh, tweak the question so that then it fits what you need to do okay so let's take um so this one okay so, so i'm going to ask chat gpt to try to answer this this them uh, question so let's see whether Chat GPT is able to give you the uh, acceptable answers. So oftentimes when when I did uh, this exercise, I find that it can go up to around 70 or probably 60% of the right answer. So when, when, when I created questions and I asked the chat GPT to answer it, especially those which is elaborative in nature so that means uh what you do is you elaborate things it means uh 70 percent probably b or b plus isn't it so it gets to to that to that level now with, with the latest versions of uh, chat gpt so it does 
uh, uh, give you uh, acceptable answers. Uh, and you use this as a template for you to write the um, not rubrics for for exam is we we use um template answers or uh what do you call what we what do we call it the marking guy marking guy ah not not marking schema, guy the, schema 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 yes the scheme ah so you can you can you start using this to create a scheme for uh the the, the question so uh so it's it's useful in that way as well isn't it um so I would say uh so for for this question uh da, 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 da. this is gonna be practicable um okay da, da, da. okay it's it's not really strictly answering the questions um what i would want the the student to answer is actually uh how far reasonably practicable practicable is uh as far as uh health and safety in uh, in in construction industry so it does try to it, it does try to answer it did try to answer the the, the question but uh, i would say successful rate is between 60 to 70 percent okay so 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 that so you you can start use this you can start to use this as um, a way for you to help you generate the the, the scheme you can even write uh, your own scheme and get the Chat GPT to uh, comment on it. Um, mostly to the the uh, created for the student. So so it helps you now um, in terms of creating exam questions, creating schemes for exam questions. So so that that's number one. That's for the normal exam that we have. Now we are asked to create open book questions isn't it so open book question is something that's uh, really in interesting because uh, when you go into open book questions uh, the students will have access to books and references so that then they can um, uh, look up the answer so the level of uh, rigor that you need to put on open book question is actually higher than the normal question the question normal questions you can even uh, uh, the students can even memorize the answers, isn't it? So they can spot the, the, the spot the question and memorize the answer. So, but we wanted we want we wanted to that we want them to ex, uh, exercise uh, them to exercise their resourcefulness in uh, drawing answers from different dif different places and different alternatives so asking open book question is something that uh, because not all of us are uh, an expert in doing this and it, um, within um i think uh, uh, apart from prof aziz uh, people from law nobody else really really uh, use open book questions. Uh, maybe people who are teaching uh, postgraduates will, will uh, be more likely to use open book questions, but use just just in the convention. The university is asking all third year uh, courses to start uh, doing open book questions, isn't it? So where better to start off uh, rather than asking chat gpt to help to assist you on creating open book questions okay so so let's uh, so we uh, so let's try and ask uh, an open book question so uh, based on what we have uh, so far so i would i would want to use okay so this one okay so so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. So and and questions based on this on 
Krishna. Then question. Okay, so. Okay, so the uh, will have test to text book. Um, what else? Um, uh, and like you know, only so, so we give it context so that then uh it will not uh, it will be able to understand where students can find pro pro possible answers okay so it starts to uh <laughs> teach you <laughs> what open book <laughs> exam is So, so the way that it um it uh, approach this is um, by being quite specific with with reference to the provide textbook and blah, uh, lecture notes and evaluate uses and uh, effectiveness. So I I don't really like it when when they ask uh, things this way. Uh, should be very know what to what are the resources that they have, isn't it? We just we just want to ask question. But still, it's mentioning the textbooks. So let's challenge. Uh, it on that. Um. Questioning. Oh, okay. So uh, probably about that spelling. Okay, so uh, it start to uh, generate an open book question. So it, it gives you a starting point at least uh, on how open question, especially when you are postgraduate students and also uh, third year students. But when 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 you, when you want to design open book question again. You need to make sure that the sub questions or the, the answers is something that is being covered during the discussions in the classroom and uh, and uh, the the way that the class is designed. Uh, so you need to uh, also be able to critically analyze uh, the the suggested question to make sure that it fits what you have taught in the classroom that's number one or if you are doing the or you designing the classroom uh, designing the exam question the open book exam question early in the semester you know these are the things that you want to uh, cover in the whole semester isn't it so so there is uh, this context that you need to give to yourself not to uh, chat gpt 
when you are designing exam question using uh, chat gpt so so that is how i think you can use uh, chat gpt so now we've sort of covered already from um, the curriculum uh, design uh, the class design the class planning to the learning activities to continuous assessment and we completed at the exam as question so so this is how i think you can supercharge your classroom with chat gpt so that's um, uh, an idea that i have uh, that i wanted to have this conversation and discussion with with you guys to see that and to, to show you that it's there if do you if you don't use it then you are actually uh, losing out uh, it does not take away your intellectual the needs uh, the, the the intellectual requirements of yourself okay in fact you need it, it needs your intellect to be able to be effective and to be able to use chat gpt or any other ai tools like but in a smarter way because this is something that's going on into the future we will not be able to escape um ai um unless somebody just flip the switch and say there's no more AI, which i uh, frankly don't really see happening in in the near future okay there are uh, a lot of uh, already ai tools that uh, is um uh, starting to come up okay uh, just now we were talking about uh, mid journey there are that uh, um and be able to cite properly uh, so i think the, the name of the um, tool or portal is actually site ai so let me try and Ah, yeah, so site AI, chat GPT for science. Okay, so so this is something that uh, I have not tried it. Uh, I, have, I, I, have, I have to, um, I have to complain. I have not tried it before. I don't know uh, how it will look like, how, uh, how robust is it? I don't know. Um, this is something that um, we can uh, start to explore uh, together probably and to see whether uh, you can make uh, efficient use of these AI tools. Okay, so so that's for teaching and learning. Okay, so teach um, with ChatGPT. So um, uh, text based. So you, I don't see how you use image uh, with with uh, ChatGPT. I've um, I've never tried it before. Uh, there is a question here by again Dr. Farid. Have you compared performance ChatGPT versus but I have not tried it. Um, maybe I think uh, Dr. Hadi, our e-learning uh, head, uh, have uh, tried it somewhat. So uh, maybe we can ask that question uh, from uh, ask ask that question to him maybe oh, he would have an idea of that i thought i have not tried uh, but uh, yet um uh, chat gpt is also some some somewhere in uh, microsoft i think um and then uh, microsoft is also starting to uh, embed chat gpt into uh, microsoft teams so that's something that's uh, interesting um, i have not seen it uh, being deployed in our uh, account yet uh, um's account yet so i don't know uh, so yeah I, i've never tried uh, uh, chat gpt with but uh, before okay so uh, teaching and learning chat gpt uh, comments and questions from our audience we have 73 so there will be somebody who uh, have uh, things to say and also questions to raise so please if you are if you are shy uh, to ask a uh, question um, by opening your mic is just you can type the, the question in your in your chat
Yes, I'm, I'm opening the, the floor. To our colleagues here. Probitel, are you still there? So I know Provita uh, has used ChatGPT. Uh, so we, we've we've discussed it uh, quite um, a few times. Provita, are, we, are you there? Probably it's not uh, around. So yeah, so uh, anyone? Okay, so, so we are 20 minutes away from the end. So uh, how else can we use uh, chat GPT? So that is a question that I want to uh, throw to our guests. So I'll give you a few minutes to think. And then I would uh, really like to hear uh, comments and suggestions from uh, our attendees, our academic colleagues. I can see a few familiar names, uh, names that I have not seen for quite a while as well. Let me start an um, online timer for you to uh, digest and think my question. Uh, give you two minutes. Dr. Zahir? Yep. Uh, Nadia here uh, from okay. the Faculty of Dentistry. Yeah, we have some, we added a question in the chat. Okay. Uh, the question is mostly on how do we detect the use of chat gpt you know for in exam and assessment what tools would you recommend us to use as in sometimes we trust the students to report mm -hmm. their usage but maybe it's under reported so just something to evaluate uh, the, the use how much the the percentage of use in their assessment or examination okay so i think so I'm thinking that this is between uh, students who are having their exams online, isn't it? Or is it? Yeah, it's, it could be uh, online or let's say like open book. Okay. Uh, we can be walking around, but we don't know how much of it that was copy pasted from the chat GPT into the assignment. Okay, so... I think there is an administrative way for you to do that. So that means uh, if you are having an open book exam, you are able to then have a policy in place to limit what students can bring into the exam hall, isn't it? So obviously, uh, digital devices like phones, you can uh, tell the students uh, that's not allowed. So they can only bring in printed materials. So that is, I think, one of the way that you can uh, do uh, the the management of that. So let's take the scenario of, of students getting or doing their exams online. So how do you uh, make sure that they uh, come, uh, uh, they are honest on uh, whatever AI that they are using? So I, I have. Um, so that the discussion on that is something that uh, I have uh, talked to uh, several colleagues before. So um, and my my idea is this: when you have a policy, uh, when you want to enact uh, any policy, make sure the policy is policeable, so uh, policeable or enforceable. Okay. So if you are doing an online exam, and you tell the students that you cannot refer to uh, 
online resources, then and you don't have a proctoring uh, a, a proctoring tool or for proctoring software, then it would it would be very hard for you to enforce that. Isn't it? Uh, am I correct? Uh, am, am I get am I am, am I being logical here? Okay. So when when that happens, then you need to uh, create questions that you know even with AI tools, they will not be able to get the full answer correctly. Okay. So you need to be smart in how you ask uh, those questions because not every everything can be caught by software tools, isn't it? Even if you are using things like Turnitin. Um, yes, Turnitin says that uh, they can catch any, anybody who's using AI tools, but uh, the effectiveness is not being... Uh, so I would say look at how you ask those questions and uh, make sure that uh, the questions uh, as uh, at the level where if you ask this question using a tool to uh, an AI tool, they will not be able to get the uh, correct answer. And you can use that. You you can uh, already start to test uh, those questions by putting the questions in ChatGPT, giving it context, and ask it to ask to answer. So, and you see how what kind of answers that does it, does it come up with and does that answer that the the ai tools to, uh, have in the answer scheme or i think that is something that you can use so uh, if you have a, a sitting down exam in an exam hall uh, again it's a, it's a policy thing so you limit the use of uh, digital devices that students can uh, bring in so that then they will not be able to um, uh, and get the answer from uh, an, an AI, 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 AI tool. Or obviously, if you, you, you need calculators, you can get the students' case. So you can bring in calculators, but not phones, isn't it? So that's how you sort of uh, manage that. I think uh, that is something that uh, we can control and uh, focus on controlling what we can control not something that we, we cannot control we cannot enforce we cannot police so that is uh, my uh, idea on that uh, thank you for the question yes um, great question i think uh, that those type of que those questions have been asked so many times in in, in the campus Okay, more question. Anwar, ah, I, I've never, I've, I have not seen you for a very long time. Anwar Nur Azit, how are you, bro? Welcome. Yeah, okay, good morning. No, I'm on sabbatical at the moment, so just listening up to uh to supercharge Manti when I start teaching again next year, inshallah. Okay, all right, yeah. great. Any more question? Okay, so. Uh, any follow-up questions that you may have? So if, if there's no more questions, so I, I want to leave you with uh, one last thing. Um, so this is something uh, that I'm going to open it up. Okay, so I'm open your, uh, I'm, I'm going to open ChatGPT again for uh, one last time. So how do we use uh, ChatGPT to assist us in other works in, uh, in our academic journey, isn't it? So we are not just uh, uh, lecturers. We do research, we do uh, we do all this curriculum review and curriculum development stuff. So how uh, do we uh, use ChatGPT to assist us? Okay, so and the way that I'm going to uh, sort of prompt by asking this the same question. Okay, so and afterwards we can uh, uh, close there. 
uh, session. Okay, so the, the prompt that I'm going to use is how does ChatGPT assist university educators who are active researchers to support their research work? This is something that uh, the, core, uh, the core thing that we do, isn't it? Uh, we do teaching and we do research. Okay, let's say, let's see how ChatGPT answers this question. And what I want you to uh, reflect okay, and think about is, is it something that's useful for me? Okay, and is it something that uh, you can start using um, uh, right now. So it does take along uh, quite a significant computing power to answer this this question. Uh, looks from the looks of it. So <laughs> the first one, literature review. Yeah, I think uh, it will be a good that. Uh, we can uh, collect this um, resources from uh, different different places, and then get the uh, ChatGPT to synthesize the the information. And we can ha have this uh, done also by our uh, research students, isn't it? The the, the PhD students. Uh, uh, I examine a lot of pieces and. What sometimes frustrates me uh, the most is uh, the way that literature, literature review is uh, approached, especially by uh, by students, uh, even PhD students. It's not something that uh, you you. I would say it's if you are talented, you can do it. Uh, otherwise, you need to learn how to do it properly, because otherwise, it becomes a collection of. It becomes a collection of um, uh, literature from different sources. There is no critical analysis of, of those uh, those literature. So uh, that is something that I would hope uh, ChatGPT will be able to assist uh, us and also our research students to so that then they they are used to the idea of how you synthesize information, how do you combine them into something that's useful and then something that helps the students to design their methodology, to design their research work. Because that is what literature, literature review is supposed to do, isn't it? To, to help frame the question and design the methodology, methodology of, of the research. Okay? Brainstorming ideas, of course. Um, uh, just ask ChatGPT, discuss it. Uh, writing assistant, interesting. Uh, draft, uh, drafting sections of a research paper. Um, uh, proofreading and editing, so that is something that we uh, use for um, proofreading. You can do it and have yeah. fun with it um, uh, for proofreading. You can uh, ask it act as a um, uh, US uh, educated person. Ask, uh, uh, ask uh, and act as a German educated person writing in English. So you will be able to see uh the uh the when they uh, write or when they um uh, summarize or do the proofreading by using those kind of prompts it will come up with different ways of uh, grammar different uh, different tone of uh, uh conversation or different tone of reading based on how you ask uh, the prompt so somebody who's using um, Australian English, somebody who's using German English. So it's, it's, it's quite interesting to do that. Okay. Uh, data analysis. Um, so it says, uh, I've, I've not tried using a chat GPT for that data, data analysis before. Okay. So it says that you can use it for interpreting. 
preparation, which is what we normally crafting grant proposal. Yeah, I think that's that that's interesting. We can um, sell the ideas more effectively, uh, especially us. We are not. Uh, we are not native speakers, so our our grammar, our our sentence construction might not be up to the standards, isn't it? and especially when we are writing a grant proposal to be submitted to uh, international uh, grant bodies. So I think ChatGPT is something that uh, can help generate the 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 correct statement or to write impactful uh, statements that. Uh, will add value uh, to uh, the the text that we are writing to to give it more impact, give it more significance. Okay, so so those are the things that uh, I would want you to think about and to uh, try, start to explore. Okay, uh, and hopefully that will help you uh, on the way of. Uh, beginning to uh, design or beginning to use ChatGPT to assist uh, your uh, work. Okay, so I want to. Uh, so there's there's another thing that I want to uh, to do uh, with the um, uh, ChatGPT. That's something that I, I just just discovered recently, which is uh, really interesting. So you can actually create a PowerPoint presentation from uh, the conversation uh, from uh, what you wanted to do with ChatGPT. So, uh, for example, you uh, have this um, uh, training that you do with uh, lecturers, isn't it? Uh, for uh, for using of ChatGPT. So, what I'm going to prompt ChatGPT with is I'm going to ask it to create a VBA code for PowerPoint presentation uh, to cover all the chat uh, uh, from the beginning. Um, so, uh, the presentation is about um, judging your class. Think that okay. So ChatGPT, what it does, um, uh, uh, VBA code that prepare a PowerPoint presentation for you. Okay. Okay, so uh so it doesn't want to create a um the PowerPoint presentation. Um, so I'm going to ask it another question. Um, our point presentation is on the outline. Yeah. Any program?
So it's creating a uh, few slides for us. So now we are up to slide five. Okay, so with this um, VBA code, what we do is we copy code. So let me change to uh, my other screen. So let me share the other screen. Okay, so so according to what it says, click on alternate F5, uh, sorry, alternate F11. Okay, it will take you to this VBA uh, app. So click on um, insert module and then paste that link there and then click on uh, run. So run is F5. Okay. So now what it does is it create, created this can you see that the power created the start putting in uh, stuff in there so uh, I've, I've tried it uh, once or twice before with uh, other presentation uh, depending on the the prompt that you use uh, you were able to uh, put more things in okay so i think that's uh, all that i uh, Sorry, have the time to share with you. Hopefully, uh, uh, what we uh, discussed today, what I've uh, showed, uh, shown to you today uh, will uh, enable you to start to use uh, ChatGPT to supercharge your class uh, and to give you uh, ideas on how you can uh, to your benefit. Uh, so somebody uh, raised their hand, which is uh, Channing yes. Alexis. Yes, that's right. Yes, doctor. Can you can you just repeat one more time? The the can you break down the steps you just did, which is fantastic. I found like the this is a great tool. So do you mind okay. to do it again? So <laughs> yeah, I'll just close this. Ah, uh, I don't know. I I close the PowerPoint together. Okay, so. In your chat GPT, so let me share the the screen what I have the chat GPT. So, so I asked and, uh, and I prompt the, exactly. Yeah, I, I prompt the, the chat GPT to create uh, uh, the VBA code for PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so what you do, uh, so it will create this uh, response. You click on copy code here. So you click on this, it will automatically co uh, cop control C uh, the the code for you. So in your PowerPoint, so let me move to the PowerPoint. I lost the control. So in your PowerPoint. So move to your PowerPoint presentation. So in the PowerPoint, you click on F alternate F11. So the instruction is actually uh, in there in the alternate F11. And then uh, it will show you this visual basic app, uh, Microsoft Visual Basic for application. Hopefully that comes up in the screen that I'm sharing with you. Okay. Okay. So click on insert and click on module. Uh, insert module okay okay and then you just paste the then paste paste ah, the, the script okay. yeah the, the paste the code that you created just now uh that not you created uh chat gpt created so this is uh, created. Uh, okay. okay and then so and, after that. and then after then what you do is you click on um run okay so oh, run, run. So automatically, when you close this, uh, it will give you this. Wow, nice. Uh, 
uh, the slides for you. <laughs> so nice. Okay. All right. Yeah, okay. So Amazing. hopefully that helps. So thank you very much. Um, uh, that's all that I have uh, to share with you uh, today. Hopefully that's useful uh, for uh, what you do. Uh, and hopefully we can use this to super. Okay. Umu or Umu or uh, Verlinda, any housekeeping announcements or anything? Uh, okay, so nothing from them. All right, so. Uh, thank you very much. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Bye bye. Hi, Victor.